All right. Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. We are recording this meeting of the Public Arts Commission for the Town of Amherst. I'd like to welcome everyone and let you know that this recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel, and it can also be accessed on the webpage for the Public Arts Commission. At this time, I would like to recognize the chairs, Terry and Tom, and thank everybody for their service to their town. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, welcome to December Amherst Public Arts Commission meeting. My name is Terry Holt. I will be your leader. Uh, okay, here we go. In light of the ongoing COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak, then Governor Baker issued an emergency order on March 12th, 2020, allowing public bodies greater flexibility in utilizing technology in the conduct of meetings under the open meeting law. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by clicking on the zoom link. This recording gets uploaded to the town's YouTube channel promptly after the meeting. No in person attendance by members of the public is permitted, but every effort is made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event they are unable to do so, or regardless, we will be posting this to the town's YouTube channel shortly after the meeting. Okay, uh, roll call. We are all here but Mikey. So how fabulous, good to see you all. I don't have treasurer report in my in my uh, agenda. I'm sorry, Robert, shoot. That's okay, I don't really have anything to report at the moment anyway. Okay, all right, so uh, let me look at my agenda here and I'm gonna share my desktop hopefully. And this one, share. And we've got agenda right here. Okay. Uh, first things first, approval of the November minutes. Did people get a chance to look at the minutes? Thank you, Tom, for doing those. See them. Did they? I I just tried to find them, but I tell you what, I can share. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. You can see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Terry, um, yeah. for one thing, um, the attendance is wrong because uh, Jim w did attend the meeting, so he should be moved up. Ah, okay. Move approval as amended. Move as amended. Okay, and then Mikey was not here last week, okay. Okay, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so for those of you who did not make it, Catherine Stryker presented her proposal. Um, we had some questions and we were <laughs> waiting for her to get back to us, but uh, I haven't really gotten that information back yet. Jim, we, do you have a question? Yeah, we didn't vote on the minutes. I was going through them since I don't know if everybody got a chance to go to read them. Oh. I was just gonna pick out some key, some key things, mostly. Oh, okay. I got we'll it. see that. Um, I can send this out for people who haven't seen it. Robert, do you need a copy of this? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I do. You can just do a share right from here. As long <laughs> as you guys have Google Docs, I hope. I think this works. So I do. If I do this. All right. Let's take a see if that works. So uh, let's hold off on approving these minutes until we get a chance to look them over. So we're going to hold off on that. Um, let's go and talk about the for want of a nail. And I think we've all got something to talk about here. Hold on, I'm trying to get my view here. She did, did I did get a bunch of documents. Um, that were sent right of uh, the list of her who she would talked to and all of yep. that that we'd asked for so that was sent by angela that was kind of a an overview of what she has done so far uh-huh um and it's kind of a timeline so you'll notice that she right. started this project in october 2022 mm -hmm. got a grant and uh for 900 and something dollars from the mass cultural council via amherst cultural council um, and then she went through some other steps, but she didn't get to us until October. 
So um, we really haven't had enough time to really go through this and ask all of our questions. So um, that's the I, one with the statue, right? Yes. So there's not two parts to, to this fact, project. Not to mention the fact that we asked for a number of documents and got zero. Yeah, well, not yet. So um, there are two parts to this project. There is uh, an exhibition of the uh, artifacts that she found along with a narrative and I guess an interpretation, the history of blacksmithing, and that's all supposedly going to go into the library. Um, so I think, you know, I don't, I didn't really have a problem with that. It's not really under my purview, but um, the statue is under the public arts purview. So we do need to look it over and do our due diligence. I did ask them to reach out to the DEI. Um, I talked to Pamela from the DEI and she said she has not received anything. She couldn't find any emails or information about this. And then I talked to Gigi Barnhill at the Amherst Historical Society and she says she really no one's reached out to her, but she says she doesn't think they have any say in it. And I just said we're trying to bring more people in to get their opinions. So so that's where we are on that. Jerry, you got a question? Oh uh, yeah. Um I don't really understand why the North Amherst Library people haven't commented on this. Have, have all of you gone and looked at the space that is being talked about for the, where this would go? Yeah, I've seen the space. And it's it's tiny. It's almost on the road. It's not a very big statue. I don't think it's not going to be very uh, big. I, I, she talked about how big it had to be to be tall enough for people not to get hurt by it. Right. So we don't even know the dimensions of it, really. I don't think, do we? Tom, did you get a good sense of the dimensions of this? No, only what I could surmise by, by looking at her pictures. So I'm guessing that it's something like maybe at most three feet high. But she but, said when she was in reference to my comment about it being an attractive nuisance, then she said it was going to be four and a half to five feet high. Yes. Okay. Well, on a pedestal. Yeah, yeah it's going to be on a plane. Including the pedestal. Right. Well, Which, I'm just, I, f I feel really steamrolled on this. I think we're listening to somebody who may be very well intentioned. Yeah. To do something nice, but doesn't have the substance to do it. If she gets the substance, then I think that we should consider it. But right now, I don't think that we have anything to consider. I think that we still are lacking information and um, feedback from the DEI. Um, I have um, written up a draft of a letter I'd like to send and I've shared that with Tom. Um, and it's basically saying, um, I can read it. I mean, it's right here. If you'd like to <laughs> if you read along with me. Uh, I just came up with this. Um, I, I don't need to read it out loud to you. You can read it yourselves. Um, so this is just basically uh, a hey, we need more time letter. I think that that is the appropriate response at this time until we hear back from about the stuff we've asked her to give us for consideration. So I talked to Angela Mills about it too to get kind of context of town hall. And she agreed that like, if we don't, we can't come up with any kind of decision because we don't have enough information. So we need to delay our decision-making, so. I think um, delay, delay, delay. The second sentence where you say we all admire your research, your passion, mm -hmm. hard work. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't be a part of a sentence that says that because I don't feel that way. Okay. Me neither. We right. can just I, I would just strike the sentence. Yeah. Yep. That's oh. fine. Also, I think that I would like to have a very explicit request for the information that we requested, including the contracts for the construction of including but not limited to, excuse my language, for include the contract for construction of the of the work and financing. And I don't think you can say we think this project could be because it says though we all voted something unanimously and that's not okay with me. Wait a minute, let me see, what does it say? That's the second paragraph. Oh, the yeah, I don't think that either. Necessarily, it might be, but I don't know that I, right now. Yeah, not now. So, can you take get rid of that we or, or change, rewrite that? Oh, that's okay. Does that work? 
I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think wording it like that is solves the problem really, because what does some of us mean in an official document? I don't I don't think you should make any commitments in this in this. No, I, think, I think you're risking getting a black eye. I mean, I appreciate you being positive and trying to be supportive in some way, but this has always been presented to us as a foregone conclusion. Mm -hmm. And that's not okay. Um, how about beginning, striking the beginning of that sentence and just starting it with uh, this project? Could be. Yeah. No, that's that better. Let me see. No, I I think that you're too positive about beautiful edition and stuff like that and public art collection. I I don't really, I I don't really think we've even talked about the value of why that is going to be there or what the North Amherst Library people think about it. It's not okay. Okay. What if you said something like, we appreciate the opportunity to consider your work, you know, consider this, yeah, consi yeah consider your work or consider mm -hmm. this project. That's good, Laurie. I like that. We could do that. However, there are, you know, for us to move forward with it, there are, um, there's more information that we need. More time and information. And that would be a good place to say we radiate the request for the documents that we asked for at the last meeting. Would it be, use <laughs> would it be useful to list those again so it's all in one document? Yeah. Yes. If you want. The big ones I mentioned a minute ago, the contract for the construction of the of the of the sculpture and all documents relating to the financing of the sculpture. I thought the financing, I thought she was going to do the fundraising. Uh I don't think you can count that as necessarily correct since she is fundraising all around already. You've she says how much she's fundraising. I think Dara and I are thinking along the same lines. Yeah, what what do you want me to say here? Well, I think the point is that that um, we would, as part of our consideration, we like to see that this thing is actually going to be funding funded, and there's not going to be another steamroller step where where she says you all approved it. Now I need some help finishing the financing. I well, think it, why don't yeah. you just say we cannot approve this project until we can we review the contract and are satisfied the funding is in place. Well, and not just that, you also have to approve the art, that artwork for that spot. Correct. Oh, yeah, right. I didn't mean to imply. Yeah, you're a good point. Yeah, that's a real thing. I mean, I don't know about that little bitty spot. And, and it's right at an intersection that takes a whole lot of concentration of looking at one, two, three, four, five different directions traffic's coming. And it's not necessarily a really good place to put anything much less be told why it's important just based on one person's thought about it. That's not what public art is. Anybody else have any thoughts about that? I agree. I agree. Yes, I agree too. Um, I think we maybe we we can separate this a bit. You know, the if we concentrate on reiterating what are the documents we need to see, and keep that separate from making any implication that once we get those, we're giving a green light, as we still have the question of whether we think this is <clears throat> this is a good idea or not. Yeah, see, because it says, um, we understand you're on a tight, at the end, last paragraph, we understand you're on a tight schedule, and I'm afraid we just cannot approve the project before. I can say consider that sounds like that it's going to get approved once it, once these things are satisfied with like documents or timing. And that's just not right. Yeah. And the other problem with it is it kind of ratifies the fact that she comes in at the last minute and says, I need this done in a week. 
Yeah. And I don't like that precedent very much. Not okay. Okay. Well, this was a draft, so I can take your what you have to say and, and add to it. And Tom and I can work on this and kind of finesse it. But the, the big things is, because I, frankly, we asked for them, we don't have them. My lawyer's mind is saying, do they exist? And that is contract with the contract with the artist is a big, big deal because there are certain rights that that need to be waived. And if they're not waived, you're going to have a real headache with that statute, particularly when it starts to rust. Yeah, the contract with the artist, you mean the, the draft, because it hasn't been given to the artist yet. The Well, it hasn't been given to us. I'm, I mean, I don't know about the artist. I can't say well, whether he... I, I'm not even sure that the person is considered an artist because they are being commissioned to do a design that somebody else designed. Oh, I think it's his design, but it's it's uh, her idea and his design. I think that's what it, oh, that was my but, understanding at well, least. I do have that written down here, so, okay. My, my That was my understanding too, but I don't think that she's contracted with him at this point because Not she yet. doesn't have she hasn't done the fund rate she hasn't raised the funds to be able to really contract with them although she could do a contract based on you know raising the funds also i don't want to take anything that she says and incorporate it as a fact that we say of our own personal knowledge that's right right You know, and that space, that's, <clears throat> that space north of the library parking lot is so much bigger than that tiny little piece right by the road. I don't know why there's, she's set on that as being her spot. Well, this just reminds me of the time that a man came to my high school and awarded my brother uh, awarded a scholarship that wound up to my brother for I don't know how many dollars and left town and there was no scholarship and there was no award and there was nothing but a speech. Mm -hmm. well, I just think, we, I mean, we, I know that everybody here wants to see either the commission begin to have more proper, like, you call it due diligence or or, or means or um, policies in place and talk about wanting to do things like that. And this is a good example of why we need it. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Ooh. This is why we, this is why we need guidelines so that we can check things off and say, does it meet this? Does it meet this? Does it meet this? We don't have that right now. No. And also, I think that it it, it is a good idea for us to think about what we each and then what we can agree on together if we can and i think we probably can um what public art's about and what it's for and that's part of the work we're doing with strategic planning yeah i mean that's a, a that's a real discussion and it's got really valuable content in it when you really get into it the history of public art's amazing mm -hmm. the the reasons people use it and want to use it is amazing and it, it would be really good for us to get to talk about it. And I don't think we need a consultant. I think we just need to do some homework. Yeah, and and then, we've actually started. Tom has started doing some of that work. And also Angela Mills has sent us uh, a lot of files on uh, past Amherst works. Um, so we have those to go through. And yeah. so we have, we kind of, we're starting that phase of like trying to collect uh, the information so that we can, know where we are right now we we barely know where we are you know okay but then i want to ask you one other question that made me concerned about things um but at the same time you're you're in talks with the cultural council about folding the public art commission into the arts council yep yep something like that yeah well what what would you say well not just something like that but what is it really so um the, the fact is that there's a lot of confusion about which organization does does what in this town. There's Amherst Cultural Council and there's us, Amherst Public Art. Um, we do we have some similar goals. Um, so if we join together, we would have um, these kind of we'd have 
the support of the cultural council and also the they they get a uh, they get money to use toward local um, local art events and public art etc it's all one kind of one pot no i know um, what they do i do so know. Would have, so my point is that we would have a, a little more budget and more voices and uh, we'd be, be able to bring in more voices with the cultural council behind us well uh, but the cultural council exists to uh, with the same mission that the uh, massachusetts cultural council exists for yep and and that's mostly to support art tests and art organizations. And the Public Art Commission has a pretty different kind of mission than that, really. And you don't want to take money away from the Art Commission, I mean, from the Cultural Council, before or while this commission is at least saying that it intends to have more presence than it has had. So I'm confused by the mixed messages I'm hearing. Okay, I think we what we might want to do is, you know, as we when we open our discussion about um, public arts, uh, you know, purposes and ways and means, that we line that up against, you know, side by side with the Cultural Council and test whether uh, there's, you know, there's um, kind of a symbiotic relationship or whether there's conflict or uncertainty. I think we we can determine that for ourselves and that would tell us whether the, the thought of some kind of merger, um, you know, make makes sense. I think we can test that and not have to, um, you know, just, just conclude from where things stand now, that either there is or there isn't an overlap. I think we can take a look at that and together and determine. Who did you who did you call by name in the beginning of what you were saying? Did you name somebody named Mike? Uh, no, I think I said maybe said might. Oh, might. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh. There's an evolution across towns. Um, one second, Robert, then I'll get to you. I'm so sorry. Um, there, there is kind of an evolution of art organizations that's happening um, in towns where they're kind of uh, their their public art is kind of joining in with an art commission and forming one entity so that they can accomplish more and fight the siloing and the fighting for money that happens because we're asking for money and so is cultural council and it helps with fundraising and so this is um it's 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 a thing that's happening in other towns and so that's what we were looking at as well i don't mean to have any mixed messages i don't have but a I think, excuse agenda me, but the cultural council gets its money from the massachusetts cultural council not the town yes that's right. yeah and that can there you know that's I don't see that as any kind of problem. What I do see as a problem is the siloing that Terry mentioned. So uh, Catherine went to the Cultural Council uh, a, year a year before talking to us, and the Cal Cultural Council apparently didn't tell her, we don't know this, I'm surmising, uh -huh. didn't tell her, hey, you better talk with public art, which, which leads me to the thought of how many times are we sort of forgotten or or overlooked it's or a history going around yeah that's a good point yeah robert i'm so sorry please your turn no that's that's okay um i, I guess i was just going to make the point uh a have we concluded the conversation on for want of a nail just looking at the agenda and if so um i mean i think the the digression is an important one and certainly, you know, merits perhaps a whole meeting uh, on its own to to determine, you know, going back to the idea of strategy, but, but sort of our our role and and how to work with the other organizations that seemingly have um, complementary missions. But uh, I guess I guess my point was just, you know. It's an important conversation. We should probably just work our way through the agenda items, but definitely make 
time this meeting and subsequent meetings to talk about this because um, it it seems like it's been and continues to be kind of an obstacle for us really moving forward. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we you can, know, yeah, we can go actually... back to the fact that you know the whole um, NIFA grant, you know, it, it, that that wasn't able to be um, to uh, you know completed, and so that. I think we obviously want to avoid something like that again. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Big problem is we don't have a budget. And they do. So this is a conversation that I think we should continue, as Robert said, um, at a different time. Let's stay on the agenda. Um, I really think this would take an entire meeting to talk about because we have a lot to go through. And it's part of the planning stages that I'd like to start doing for 2024. So. Um, Let's move along. I think what we've got a basic idea for a letter that we're going to, uh, Tom and I are going to whip into shape. We'll make sure that we um, don't say anything that says we are supporting it and loving your project so that, you know, I'm always really just being way too nice. So I will, uh, we will work on that. Is that okay? When we move on to the next thing. If it's going to be signed by all of us, we ought to see a final draft before it's sent to anybody. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Okay, so Tom, let's get this. We'll we'll get this whipped into shape, and then we will send it out to you. Okay, and I will wait to hear approval from all of you before I send it. Yeah, I definitely want to look at it because I want to make sure it doesn't get us in any legal trouble. Okay. The, the gym on public meeting grounds. Can can we do this as proposed here? That uh, we send no. everybody a draft, or do we need to? We need to wait for another actual meeting. Um, thank you for raising that. The answer is probably no, because the problem is that's called a serial breach of. of if, if 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 Dara talks to me and I talk to Tom and Tom talks to Robert and Robert talks to Laurie and then it goes to Terry, that's clearly a violation of the open meeting law. Well, what if I send the final copy to each of you separately and have you all get back to me separately? Uh, I, I, I'm I, not going to definitely say it violates it, but it certainly is at a minimum on the line and I'm not comfortable with it. Okay. I mean, I'd have to, you know, I take and I have to go and spend like 30 minutes looking at the various authorities and I predict I would say no but I'm not saying that definitely because I need to look at the authorities this is so uh, right on the line yeah. okay so this is why we can't get things done because it takes a month between I swear I know well, I was yeah. so so hard to get things done yeah, I think we have no alternative but to um we do the draft and then have the, have it over have it available for discussion at our next meeting. To be to be safe about this because we are uh, the group here is asking that this be uh, something that everybody gets uh, to approve. How about if we 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 do everything except talking to each other? So you do the draft, you send it to everybody. They make their little notes and stuff, and we have a meeting with only that on the agenda. December is real tricky. I don't know. Oh if yeah, we can you're right. Pull that together. Mm -hmm. Okay. We all have yeah, you're right. Well, no. you could just say you could just say to her that we haven't had time to do it yet, and that we'll she'll get we'll she'll hear from us in November in January. Okay. Everybody agree? Well, yeah, because actually one of the things I was thinking about is we I, I, I would like to see us have a little bit more spade work done before we even start to discuss these things because we spent a lot of time on this and I'm predicting it's never going to come to pass. I hope I'm wrong, but I, it doesn't look good to me. It feels like it's moving forward without our approval, so I don't. I really don't know. What the nail thing? Yeah. Well, how? Well, how do? You, what do you mean by that, Terry? Well, it's approved by everybody, so. and they're they're ready to sign a sign a contract with this artist, and I just feel like we're. Who's they? Thrown in at the end here. 
Did you read the thing that was sent uh, to everybody, the next steps and all that? Did you, did yeah. everybody receive that letter? I did. If you'll, do you see all the work? It just doesn't seem to me that there's anything that makes you think that it's all a, a done deal already. She's just calling it a done deal. I mean, there's no evidence that she has any money. There's no evidence that she has anybody to to build it. There's no evidence of what the contract would be with that person. And then we what about nothing. the North Amherst Library people? How, how do they feel? It says that they approved it. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't say that they approved it. It says that the... Oh, that the Joe, I'm sorry. The Jones people approved that's it. That's different. Yeah. yeah. So a very different bunch of people in a different location. So there's a lot of things that are being glossed over in the and for the sake, I guess, of getting as quick approval as she can because she wants to. But her wanting to doesn't give you any, that's not enough reason for us to act like we agree with everything she says. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. it sounds like I'm going to send her an email saying we cannot we cannot decide on this until you'll hear you'll heal back from us you'll heal back from us hear back from us in january does that sound okay yes okay so that is what i will do but okay. i but i think we need to remind her that she promised to get documents to her and we haven't received anything i can say that too yep yeah i think that's safe enough okay oh and yeah documents okay moving on to the next thing thank you very much everybody <laughs> Uh, Boltwood, Gall yeah. Boltwood Gallery, next steps. Um, I have more information about that in my chair report, which I could move up to give you all the information. Would that be okay if we skipped forward to chair report and then we can come back to this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you hang on just one second, please? Yeah. All right. I have this in your minutes. You, did you uh, send this email? Did you get that email? Yes. All right. Hey, Jim, can I get started? Well, just give me another minute, please. Okay. I'm not behind. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so after not re after that, I've sent an email to Dominique Peachy. Um, We're on Boltwood Gallery? On the Boltwood Gallery. Yeah. Uh, we had to go back and forth with the contract. I worked with Town Hall to um, eliminate some steps that she was concerned about, uh, specifically the need to have workers' compensation as an artist. Uh, it took a, the Town Hall, it took Paul Bachman a while to get back to me. He had to talk to the lawyer for the town. Um, so after I finally got the edits done for the contract, I sent it to her November 14th, and I have not heard from her since. I've sent out two more emails to her about a week apart um, that I followed up with a phone with a text message and she has not returned uh, any of my communications. Um, so I've been a little worried about her, but uh, I found a November 13th article on the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod website that features her and uh, there she is. <laughs> and uh, she's doing good. <laughs> she's she's OK. So I'm, I'm glad to know that. But it says that she had a piece installed in Amherst. Yeah. Is that so true? Not, no. Well, then that's a real problem. That's isn't crazy. It? Yeah. So there is one piece. One one of her pieces is in one window, but <laughs> the other four windows are are blank because she never installed because she was waiting for the contract. And so this is a bit of a mess. So let's um, review. We're talking with an artist that we cannot contact that made a false statement to a newspaper. Right. What does that tell you? So um, I think that she was having a housing challenge. And so she returned to Truro where maybe her family lives. This is my my guessing here. Um, I'm not I don't know why she hasn't responded to the emails. Um, does it explain the false statement to the newspaper? So at this point, um, I I did extend the trust to her to I gave her the the shadow boxes in the windows so that she could install her art in them. And I should not have done that without a contract, so that's on me. I'm sorry. How much I'm is a that a big trusting deal? Trusting soul. Are they very expensive? Uh, they're custom made. 
So the custom made out of wood to fit the windows perfectly. So you can put a piece of art in it and then kind of slide it into the window so that you can see it from the outside. Okay, so that are they inexpensive or expensive? I don't know. They're custom made. I, I, would, I we so would have, we to, have get to get them get, remade. I was so we have to get them. those back from her. Yes. She lives so in Truro, um, as far as I know. Um, and I, she was having car problems. Um, so at this point, um, at this point, I don't know what to do about that particular problem, but we need to return the funds that were promised that were given to us from the Amherst Cultural Council because we did not follow through on this. And so we're, we have to give them back the money. Wow, we're doing good with giving back money. I swear. <laughs> hundred. So yeah, wow. it just feels like a lot of misses. I'm I'm very frustrated. I understand. I wouldn't worry about those uh, those things that you gave her unless they turn out to be very, 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 very expensive. I really don't know. Most of doing business. Uh, I, I would like to talk to you all about the, the possibility of putting out a new call for artists to fill the Boltwood Gallery using our own funds uh, in the spring and invite the past applicants um, because it doesn't feel right to, to, just to go to the past applicants and say, oh, let's use you instead. That doesn't seem quite right. So I wanted to ask if what you all felt about that. It's no saying we have to have this going from September to September. We could have it going from April to April. There's no reason we can't do that. Yeah. So um, that was my, I'm trying to, you know, make lemonade out of these lemons. So what do you all think about that? Well, I kept notes that we, on the discussions we had when we arrived at Dominique Peachy, I remember, mm -hmm. and, um, there were a couple of other people whose work we thought was pretty great. So I don't know if, I don't have a strong opinion about which way it ought to be handled. Okay. Partly because you have to rescind her offer, yes. right? Well, the, she never signed a contract. So I will be telling, I already let um, Matt know with the cultural council and I'm waiting for them to get back to me. I would recommend that if we are saying it's over with her, that it would be appropriate to send her a very polite yes. letter to that effect. And yes. that she needs to return. Yeah. That's yeah. what Angela Mills uh, advised the same and said, you know, you can send that in an email, but follow, but also send it snail mail so that we have covered all our bases. Registered. So she has to sign for it. Ooh, there you go. That's an idea. Uh, it's a PO box, though, so I don't think that's that's gonna oh. work, <laughs> unfortunately. So yeah, I just it feels like another miss, and I'm very disappointed and frustrated, and I'd like to make lemonade out of this. So I, I if we do a new call for artists, I would invite the past applicants to even just resubmit this their same applications from September, and yeah, you know, go from there. Yeah, I like. It. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. What do we think about that, Lori, Robert? That sound like an idea? That's fine. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's move along. Uh, Town Hall Gallery. Um, Mikey's requesting more help with the gallery. She's looking for a co-coordinator. Would anybody be interested in that position? That would be helping find new artists, uh, help hang the art or organize the hanging of the art and help organize artist receptions. Yeah, yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. I'll volunteer for that, uh, Terry. Yay, thank you, Tom. Great. Um, also, uh, uh, Pamela Nolan Young, the director of the Department of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion would like to use the Town Hall Gallery for February to do a um, Black History Month pop-up museum. Um, I've already talked to Mikey about it, who, um, I said, you know, can, what, what can we know? Is this, is this month available? And she said, oh, I've already got somebody. But she talked to the artist and the artist is fine with giving up February and doing a March, April instead. So we have this opportunity to collaborate with the DEI on what sounds like a really cool Black History Month project. Great. Um, I am a big fan of this idea. And um, I, I, I thought you all would be as well. I'm seeing nodding people, so. I'm agree. Okay. Um, and so I said, we, we would love to have Pamela on here. I invited her to the meeting, but I wasn't sure if she could make it. Um, and 
we can talk to her about what she's looking to do and uh, if we can help arrange a reception, uh, what we can do out of our resources or our work to help this happen. And I think we can help by having an opening reception or we can uh, uh, contribute some funds toward this. Would this all be okay with you? I think we need to know what the funds are for. Obviously, obviously. Seem like the DE, the, the office, their DI office would have some money. Yes. Well, yes, but I'm just as a collaborator, it would be um, it would be nice for us to be able to contribute. Yeah, um, I, I like the idea. I think let, let's go ahead to have that conversation. OK, so that we uh, learn what uh, DEI has, what they what they intend to. OK, uh, their first step was to ask us if they can use the property. So if yeah, it's OK yeah. with you, I will tell her yes. Is that OK? Yes. It's OK with me. Mm -hmm. OK. All right. All right. Good. I will let her know. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, I talked to Gabrielle Gould of the Business Improvement District. <laughs> uh, she uh, told me that she's interested in bringing back art nights to downtown and that uh, she would be helping with she would be raising money for it and helping organize. And I said, great. And so we're going to talk more about that when I see her, I guess, in January. So and what's that, what's our commission's role in art night? Art well, we now? don't there's really I don't have an answer for that right now. This is just very like very beginning talks. And I was not here for art we, our art night in the past. I, all of you probably have attended an art night here in Amherst. I have not. So there used to be, I think they called it gallery night or was it art night? There were open galleries, I know, but there were other things that, too. I think it was monthly if I'm there, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I did not attend, but she said it was great for business that all the, ga the galleries open and people put art in their front windows. And it was really, um, yeah. uh, everyone was really excited yeah. about it. And then COVID came along and we haven't had those and she'd like to bring it back. And I said, we would love to do that too, probably. So um, we, I don't, there's no role yet. I don't have any. Terry, let's, let's look in the documents that Angela gave us to see whether there's um, information about what involvement public art might have had in the past. I think that Amy, who was a, uh, a chair from, I want to say two or three years ago, I think her name is Amy and I forgot her last name. I'm so sorry. Um, I might reach out to her and ask what that what she did because I know that there was organization that happened on our end, but um, just to kind of get some information about it. So that's where we are in that. I'll talk more about it when I have any more information. And then poetic dialogue is installed. Yay, there's one plus. Uh, Kimball's check is being processed now. Uh, and also the Electrify Amherst project, the grant, I, I put it in and um, I have not heard back about it yet. So we're still waiting on that. And that's my update. So thank you. Now we can go back to, no, we don't have to. We got that. We got that. We got that. Chair report. Okay. I think I am at the end of what I have on my agenda. And it's 7.15, oh. so it's only 45 minute me. I was trying to make it a half an hour, but we pushed past that. We have a lot of conversations coming up about planning coming up. And Dara, I really look forward to having those conversations about who we are and what we want, you know. And it, it is unfortunate that this for want of a nail came, it came up now when we don't have our guidelines yet, you know. So we're kind of struggling, you know, to figure it out. That's okay. We'll yeah, silver lining. It's it's it's. I think it's 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 going to help elucidate some of the things that we do need to just. To right. It's been a year of elucidating, right? <laughs> it's been like a hard. Yeah, well, welcome to Amherst. The year of hard knocks. I I swear it's been hard to accomplish things. I'm hoping. I have I have a a lot of hope for 2024. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, let's send out a doodle and figure out when we can meet in early ooh, January. <laughs> uh, I started a new job. I started a new job on January second, which I'm very excited about. So um, I'm very happy. Congratulations! Thank you yes. very much. Thank yeah. you. 
Um, so I'm very happy that Tom is co-chairing with me so that we can share that work and I look forward to that. And anybody have anything else say any other business we did not anticipate? Not me. Not you, Lori, um, anything? No. No. No, okay. Robert, good to see you. Good to see all of you. Nice um, you. I am gonna ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome, thank you. Thank you all for meeting. I hope you have, if you, whatever you celebrate this month, I hope you have fantastic holidays and celebrations and I will see you all in January. Thank Great. you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I never turn this off. <laughs> Bye. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Hi, babe. Oh, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs>